Hello there and I hope you're all well on this Friday. Today I want to talk very quickly about intercession. What is intercession and why do it? So basically, intercession is when you pray for somebody else. We say interceding. In other words, coming into the equation between that person and God. So for example, you might see somebody who, I don't know, has a very dysfunctional life, drugs, sex, rock and roll, whatever, but deep down your heart you know that that person was very wounded or something as a child, and you're praying and you're asking Jesus for the graces, for the light, that that person may come to know Jesus, may come to know his love, and may experience the conversion. And upon experience the conversion, know how much he's loved or she is loved and what not. Now, yesterday a funny experience happened to me. I told somebody that I was interceding for a certain person. And at times when you're interceding for a certain person, you see, um, you feel some of the other person's pain. It's like if you go to the hospital, for example, and you see all these people sick. Sometimes you're going to feel empathy, you're going to feel sympathy, and you're going to feel some of their pain. And sometimes you'll feel some of their anger, you might feel some of their hatred, you might feel some of their unholiness, you might feel what not, you know? It's a bit like if you're beside somebody that hasn't washed for a month, you're going to smell, basically, their smell, you know what I mean? And so sometimes as you feel this, you're also going to feel, if you're interceding, you're going to feel Jesus' sadness, you see, because you're interceding. So in your heart, you're carrying Jesus, and you know that Jesus loves them. And Jesus, in your heart, is showing you, I love that person, I thirst for that person, I really don't want that person living a life like that. I want them to know I love them. I want to know that I forgive them. I want to know that, I want them to know, sorry, that um, they're loved and cherished. And as a result, sometimes Jesus allows you to actually feel his aching, his longing, his desire for that soul. And sometimes as you feel it, because he's living in you through your baptism, sometimes as you feel it, you're going to feel his sadness so much so that you're going to cry. And you're also going to feel the hardness of perhaps the person in front of you. And sometimes this is what we call a burden, a spiritual burden, an intercessory burden. And sometimes it's very hard. And I know in my experience, I've had times when Jesus has asked me to carry certain burdens for hours and sometimes days. And let me tell you, inside it's been like an inner crucifixion. But afterward, the result is that the person in question gets some sort of a healing, gets a light, gets an infusion of grace into their soul. And so you see, it's part of the gift is the cross. But what happened to me yesterday was I spoke to this person and I just told him about a certain thing I was interceding for. And he said to me, and sadly, I was surprised it was a priest that said it. He said, well, it's none of your business. And it suddenly hit me just how narcissistic in some ways today's society can be. In other words, why should I be praying for that person out there? It's none of my business. It's the same way that's how we live our lives today in this secular society. You have your house, you have your job, you have your car, and if the neighbours are dying of hunger, it's none of your business. And you see, that's not how charitable people live. If you have a lot of money and you know your neighbours are dying of hunger, well, you're going to go to the shops and get them something, aren't you? And so it's the same thing in the spiritual realm. If God has blessed you and anointed you and given you a lot of light, he's asking you to share the light because he's given you a grace, not through your merits, but just through his grace. It could have been the other way around. Now he's asking you to be generous. Because you see, you were converted maybe years ago yourself because somebody was praying for you. So now Jesus is asking you to pass on, if you like, the generosity to pass on the favour. And so you see, in Medjugorje, for example, Our Lady is constantly asking us to pray for priests. To pray for priests. So why? Because priests oftentimes are under a lot of attack. They're under a lot of spiritual attack. Demons, of course, attack priests more than other souls because, you know, if you get the priest to go wrong, basically you get the whole parish to go wrong. There's more, more to lose, so to speak, you know. And so as a result, we're called to praying for priests because our prayer have power. Now, sometimes it's true, priests don't actually recognize that lay people can help them. Sometimes priests live in a sort of a world of their own, that they sort of think that they don't need the prayer of the laity, and that we're mere lay people, and that basically they, they don't need us, or that they shouldn't need us because they're priests. Now, sadly, that error, sometimes, the ones that believe it, is a product of their training, and so we have to not let that get into our hearts. But when we see the lives of the saints, we see St. Teresa, the child Jesus, for example, Sister Faustina, they were night and day praying for priests. And praying is interceding. 
And sometimes Jesus will allow us to feel the hardship priests are going through, the terrible spiritual trials, the attacks. And he allows us to feel this, not so that we judge them and say, oh, look at how unholy that priest is, but also to just see how much attack they're under and how much um, weakness is in them. And so you see, our job as intercessors, as prayers, is to pray, is to offer, and yes, is to suffer. And at times, I will have to tell you, intercession of all the ministries, I have to pretty much say, it's the one that will bring you the closest to Jesus. The reason is because you have nothing to show for it, nobody will offer you a bit of thanks for it, nobody will give you even a penny for it because it's totally invisible, and if you want to really excel in the spiritual journey, then get involved in the ministry of intercession, because let me tell you, there's no other ministry in the world that, 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 has, that has more ingratitude attached to it. However, Jesus will reward you, the Holy Spirit will reward you, and just as your Heavenly Father, he sees what you're doing invisibly, he too will reward you in his way, invisibly, or he'll reward you through other people. And so basically, yeah, today pray. Pray for other people, be generous. Realize that your prayers carry power, and that unlike what that priest said, it is your business. Because we are called to pray for one another, we're called to carry one another's burdens. Afterwards, we have to get the right balance. Jesus doesn't want you praying so much that you get a nervous breakdown. On the other hand, he doesn't want you not praying at all. So get the right balance. But, you know, be generous. Our Lady needs you. The Holy Spirit needs you. Jesus needs you. And the people out there that haven't met Jesus yet, they need you. They need your prayers. They need your intercession. They need your love. And don't be fooled by people who say, well, Jesus died on the cross. He's done it all. So basically your prayers are basically not needed. That's not true. Some Protestant people believe that and let them believe it, but it's not true. Jesus needs our prayers because he lives in us and in us and through us he's working with us and using us to basically bring people to him. So, and also see it as a mission, but also see it as something wonderful that we're actually being called into this. We're being called into helping Jesus. We're being called into actually helping Jesus bring souls to him to heal souls and we too who are in need of healing, we are able to be instruments of salvation, of healing, of cooperation with divine grace to help others. So let the joy of that well up in us even when it's, even when it's difficult. So anyway, that's enough for me. It's Friday. It's a day of prayer. And so, yeah, I would encourage you today to pray and especially to pray for our priests. Pray basically for healing of their hearts, for fortitude, for love, for wisdom, for discernment, for direction for appropriate preaching and teaching and ministries and all sorts of stuff, that they may be men of prayer, men on fire with the love of Jesus, the compassion of Jesus, the anointing of Jesus and the authority of Jesus for the renewal of the church and for the healing of so many lost and broken people. Thank you for watching. Pray for me too. And ciao, ciao.